In this video, I'm going to build a very basic sentence generator. And while it's not going to be production worthy, it will give you some insight into how something in a natural language processing application, this kind of task might work. So the first thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need some data from which to learn or from which to use as a context. And I'm going to use NLTK for that. So I will import the corpus module from NLTK. And a corpus is basically just a body of text. All right, next I want to get a particular corpus. I'm going to use a corpus called Brown. It's rather general purpose, fairly well known. And I'm going to get the sentences out of it. NLTK corpus.brown.sense. Now if you look, there are just over 57,000 sentences in here. And if you look at the first one, that's not what I wanted to do. Sentences sub zero. There we go. You'll see that it's just a list of words or a list of strings in this case. Now, some of these are not actually words. So this here, and then this, and I don't know if that's a space or what. And then this is a, um, a period at the end. And then there could be commas in other places and such. I'm going to need a way to remove those. And we'll take a look at that later. But first, let's get started building the, let's say, lookup table. And it's going to be a dictionary that represents something called n-grams. And an n-gram is simply a sequence of words. So in other words, if you have, we're going to be working with two grams. So a two gram would be the Fulton, because Fulton follows the, or Fulton County, because County follows Fulton. And what's going to happen is the n-grams dictionary, every single word is going to be a key. Every single word in the entire corpus is going to be a key. For each word in the corpus, there's going to be a list of words that follows it everywhere. So in other words, there would be a key in the Ingrams dictionary for the, and then the list of words that correspond to that key would include Fulton. And you'll see how this and you see how this works later as we go ahead and as we go ahead and build the dictionary. So first thing I want to do is to actually create the Ingrams dictionary, which is fairly simple. create a dictionary. All right, now I want to loop through all of the sentences. So I'll say for sentence in sentences. And now this is where I want to eliminate or ignore all of the words or all of the strings rather in that sentence that do not start with some kind of a let, let not start with a character. I'm going to say words equals, and this is going to be a list, word for word in sentence, but include it only if the first letter of that word is, whoops, is alpha. So that will eliminate any punctuation. All right, now what I want to do is I want to iterate over the words. So for ix in range, Lin words minus one. Now this is a little bit of a flaw here of this particular implementation. And like I said, it's not production worthy. It's just giving us insight into how this works. Is that will is that every single sentence, the last word will not be considered at all. Because there's no word that follows the last word. In this case, I'm just omitting it. So that's why I'm only considering all the words up to the last one. Now what I'll do is I'll try and say ingrams and I want to get the key. The key is going to be the word for the current index. So it'll be words sub ix. And if that exists, there will be a list and I can append the following word to the list. And that would be, uh, yeah, that would be words 
ix plus 1. In the case that there is no key for this particular word here, it's going to throw a key error or raise a key error. So I want to accept a key error. And I'm not going to use that key error, so I'll just put it in the throwaway variable. But what I want to do is use this as, a, as an opportunity to create, you know, if this is the first time that this word has been seen, then I need to create a new list for it. And then I can append the following words. Now, if I didn't make any typos, this should work. And then if I just look at ingrams, it's going to be way too long. But you can see here, the. So Fulton follows the, jury follows the, September, October follows the, jury, 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 jury. And you're going to find that there's a list like this for every single word in the corpus. Now, you might be thinking, hey, we're going to have to have some way to eliminate the duplicates. That actually is not the case. This actually, it's actually kind of a uh, built-in waiting system because what's going to happen is in order to, I'll just select for any given key, I'll just select a word at random out of the list for that key. And obviously, a word that is used more often is more likely to make sense in a final sentence. So, th like I said, this, works as, this is going to work out well. Now I need to write, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Now I need to go ahead and write the a function to generate a sentence from the ingrams. So I'll need to import random, random. And then I'll say def generate sentence. And nb is going to be the number of words to have in a sentence. And I'll just set it to default to 7. And I want to have a list of words that'll make up the sentence. And then I want to select at random the first word. Now I'm going to use next word, even though this is the first word, and I'll just keep on reusing the variable next word throughout the process. But all I want to do is I want to choose from random a key from the engrams. That should be dot keys. And actually need to convert this to a list because keys is not actually a list, but it can be converted to a list. Words dot append, add that add that first word to the list. Now I just need to repeat this for until we get to the desired length. So I'll say while len of words is less than in B. Then I can simply generate get the next word and this will be random dot choice again. Except this time I want to get a word at random from the list of words that follow current word. In grams. next word. So it will choose a word at random from this list. And then words.append next word. And finally I can return that list separated by separated by a space. All right, let's see how this works. So white stucco building line AF units the temperature. Some of these are better than others. Uh, belief that choices are an old. Belief that many choices are an old. Now this one makes sense. It just doesn't seem to know where to stop. And that is one of the, you get partial sentences, I guess is what we're generating. This Using this code, does, it doesn't know where to stop because it doesn't know if any of the words, it doesn't know what the terminating words are. So that is one, like I said, shortcoming of this. Let's go ahead and look at a few more here. Ranger fund for what the, again, that could, that could make sense. Student as well as a follow-up airmail. Again, 
it flows even though this a follow-up airmail there's not really any such thing as a follow-up airmail still it, it doesn't sound completely like it's random so let's compare this to what would happen if it were actually random so let's say def generate sentence by force and again say nb equals seven This time I'm going to return a joined list and the list I'm just going to create in line will say random.choice list ingrams.keys and for blah in range of nb. And this will just by default choose seven random keys from the ingrams dictionary. See how this one looks. Generate sentence by force. So here, engine stand broad nib Joyce Beach Aubrey's troops. That one actually makes a little bit of sense. Uh, but most of these do not, but again, most of these do not make any sense whatsoever. Whereas these are a little more, they, they flow. Money fed life in the back in familiar. So still, this is a way like I said it's not it's not production worthy but you can see how just making that small change and putting a little bit of context and you could also make three grams and four grams um, like I said uh, in gram is just uh, in number of words in sequence storing those so that is all for this video and in the next video we'll take a look at something different